Hello, and welcome to Terra Informa, your weekly source for environmental news. My name is Derek Hornland, and I'll be your host for the next half hour. This week, we'll hear from members of the Azerbaijani communities of Edmonton and Vancouver regarding the deterioration of Lake Urmia in Iran. We will also hear from Kerry Seltzer in Tanzania. Lake Urmia is one of the largest salt lakes in the world, Located in Iran, between the provinces of East Azerbaijan and West Azerbaijan, it is a breeding ground for flamingos and one of the largest habitats of saltwater shrimp. Lake Urmia is a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and a wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention of Wetlands. It plays a crucial role in the economic, ecological, and social health of the region. Currently, the lake is in danger of drying up. More than just an environmental problem, the deterioration of the lake could impact the 13 million inhabitants of the region. Terra Informa correspondent Catherine Lennon talks to some members of the Azerbaijani communities in Edmonton and Vancouver to hear their concerns. My name is Sadi Eldrum. I'm actually a spokesperson for South Azerbaijan Independent Party. Lake Urmi is uh, drying. 60% of the lake is already is gone. We have uh, maximum two years to support or to save it. Lake Urmia is an ancient salt lake. The lake covers an area of about 5,000 square kilometers. That makes it the largest lake in the Middle East and one of the largest salt lakes in the world. My name's Mike Camp. I've visited around a few times and I've been to the lake in question and uh, it was a beautiful lake. Uh, such high salt content that you just float when you go in the lake and it's uh, very sharp on the bottom because of the salt crystals but it's a great uh, habitat for birds migrating through the region uh, used to have uh, flamingos and pelicans and uh, now it's just drying up uh, there's also a shrimp found in the lake native to the lake that's uh, very rare and it's used in eye surgery the lake is home to more than 211 species of birds such as flamingos pelicans spoonbills and gulls over 41 species of reptiles, 7 species of amphibians, and 27 species of mammals, such as the yellow deer. It is one of the largest natural habitats in the world of a unique genus of brine shrimp called Artemia. These shrimp are able to live in environments with high salinity. Over the last decade, the salinity of the lake has increased from 140 grams of salt per liter of water to 330 grams. The increased salinity could make it difficult for inhabitants of the area to have access to drinking water. Now my relatives actually, they don't have drinking water. Now these days, they, they should go someplace away to, to bring uh, water for, for, you know, cooking food, for mm -hmm. even tea. They cannot use the water in, from that area. Possible causes of the rising salinity are likely to be surface flow diversions, groundwater extractions, and climate change. Saline lakes are highly sensitive to environmental changes. In the last few decades, the salinity of many large and permanent salt lakes has risen due to human activities, and several of them have dried up completely. These include Owens Lake in California and Winnemucca Lake in Nevada. In almost all cases, the reason for the change in salinity is man-made. Often, it is the diversion of inflowing rivers to meet agricultural and other human needs. In recent years, the Iranian government has built dams on more than 20 tributaries which feed into the lake, which has reduced the depth of the shallow lake by seven meters. Many cite these damming projects as the cause for the deterioration of the lake. In the last 10 years, they have built 40 dams, and now there are, uh, I believe, 15 dams under construction and 20 dams under study to be constructed. All the experts, including uh, Iranian geology department, Iranian government geology department, that they believe that the dams are the, the main reason. What they say is that, that, that there had been a direct relationship between the rainfall and the water level of the lake from thousands of years ago until the year 2000. After that, although the rainfall was normal, the water level goes down and down, and, and the dams that have been uh, built over the rivers feeding the lake Urmia are the main reason. Those I spoke to raised concerns about the human rights of those living around the lake. 
but it seems to be a question of possible persecution because uh, the region is Azerbaijani people mostly, and the water is being diverted from the rivers that feed the lake to serve the Persian farmers uh, to develop their land. So it could be more a question of repression than anything. To learn more about the human rights side of things, I spoke with Elirza Gulunju. He was born in a village near Lake Urmia and is the communications director for the Association for the Defense of Azerbaijani Political Prisoners in Iran, based in Vancouver, and is the founder of the Save Lake Urmia campaign. The issue of Lake Urmia also like, is happening in Azerbaijani region. So, and Azerbaijan is actually are a minority in Iran, uh, and that they have been subjected to racism and discrimination for decades. Their mother tongue, uh, Turkish language, is banned in education and official usage. That there have been peaceful protests against Iranian government policies over Lake Urmia for more than uh, almost three years, uh, and then. In August 2011, when a motion uh, that was recommended by uh, deputies uh, from the city of Urmia to invest funds for the lake, uh, when that motion rejected by uh, Iranian parliament, mass demonstrations took place all over Iranian Azerbaijan or uh, South Azerbaijani cities. And they, they had demonstrations every Saturday in August and September. And Unfortunately, the, the police response was extremely violent uh, and brutal. Thousands uh, were arrested, of course, injured, and some were killed, reportedly. I spoke with Farid, who is a PhD student at the University of Alberta. He was part of a demonstration organized in Edmonton in November of 2011 by the Azerbaijani Cultural Student Association and the Edmonton Azerbaijani community. So we thought we, we do our share and our part to, to raise the awareness of the local and international. So we decided to gather here to demonstrate what we want and what we ask the, the government of Canada, government of Alberta and United Nations to take you know, to their own responsibilities and take actions to urge Iranian government to do something to save Lake Urumia. And what will happen if Lake Urumia dries up? salt will get airborne and it'll affect people's health and uh, people will have to move from the region. Experts say that as a result there will be storms, a storm of salt which will be spread over the towns and villages around the lake uh, as well as orchards and farmlands and eventually 4 to 14 million people will have to be displaced to avoid the storm of salt within the region. Uh, well, uh, actu actually, uh, actually, even now, many farms and orchards in many towns and villages were destroyed. Many of them are already suffering from the lack of drinking water, many people uh, living uh, around the Lake Urmia. For example, in Anzal district uh, in Urmia, they, they don't have drinking water. Uh, according to uh, professor Ismail Kahrom, uh, a professor uh, of environmental sciences of the University of Tehran, if Lake Urmia dries up, it has been estimated that six to eight cities will be totally destroyed, covered by layers and layers of salt. Uh, I, I heard from the Urmia the people, they said, well, when the morning we, we open the car or we, we clean the car, we see the, the little dust of the uh, salt on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they uh, inhale and all till, they feel the uh, pain, the eye, they, they feel the pain. This will be an environmental catastrophe, not only in Azerbaijani cities of Iran, but also in neighboring countries such as uh, Republic of Azerbaijan, Turkey, Armenia, and Iraq. Uh, so a disaster in Middle East, East Anatolia, and Caucasus. I also asked Elirza about solutions that are being proposed and what demands his organization is making. Uh, we believe that the international community and organizations such as the uh, United Nations and the ANAP need to stand with the local people to help protect 
their basic human rights of free speech, assembly, and peaceful protest, along with their right uh, of access to water, a, fu- a fundamental resource for survival, actually. And most importantly, Iran- Iranian government should be forced to open the dams and let the water flow in, into the lake. Uh, the other uh, solutions, like transferring water from like Aras River or Caspian Sea or some other rivers in other regions, those are long-term solutions. Uh, and we, as uh, ADAP uh, Association uh, for the Defense of Azerbaijani Political Prisoners, and also a campaign to save Lake Urmia, hope that neighboring countries uh, especially those that impacted by this environmental catastrophe, such as Turkey and Republic of Azerbaijan, will also join in the call for action and find ways uh, to work to, uh, towards a, a, a solution, a solution for for the uh, for this catastrophe. <laughs> especially for the people around the lake, is the matter of the life. And the, the most things they are asking, the slogans they are giving, uh, open the dams and fill the, the lake uh, or feed the lake. This is the most thing they ask because they know what is the matter. Directly, uh, uh, directly connected to their life, to everybody's uh, future in the, in the area. Like Urmia is tied to the identity and culture of its people. The song you heard clips from is by Parisa Arsalani. It's called Flamingo and is dedicated to Lake Urmia. It was released in 2011. Thank you, Catherine. I'm your host, Derek Hornland, and you're listening to Terra Informa. Terra Informa is dedicated to providing a weekly source for environmental news stories from across Canada and around the world. You can download our shows or listen to us streaming online at terrainforma.ca.